we have an example problem here. A positive 12 nanocoulomb charge is distributed uniformly along the y-axis from y equals negative 1.1 meters to y equals 4.0 meters. What is the y component of the electric field at x equals 2 meters on the x-axis? All right, let's do a little sketch. Here's my, excuse me, my axes, x and y. It tells us the charge is distributed uniformly. So that means everywhere between y equals negative 1.1 meter to y equals 4.0 meters has some of this charge. Uniformly means lambda is a constant. We could find this value by taking this total charge of 12 nanocoulombs and dividing it by the length of this distribution. So 4, 5, but minus 0.1, oh dear. So 4 and then 5.1 meters. So the charge is distributed between 4 meters and negative 1.1 meters. So it is distributed along a length of 5.1 meters. So we know lambda. We're wanting to find the electric field out here at a distance of 2 meters on the x-axis. And we specifically are asked only for the y component. So we want to think about how every single piece of charge is contributing to the electric field at this location. Again, the electric field due to any one piece, we call that DE, and each piece is contributing a different amount and a different direction. Continuous charge distribution, we know we need to integrate. So we're treating the rod as a whole bunch of point charges, dQs, divide by r squared, where r is the straight line distance between one point charge and where we're trying to find the field. r is changing here. And then multiply by r hat, meaning the direction. Okay, so all of these, we essentially need to find dq, r, and r hat. And really, we only need the y component for this problem. That's all it is asking for. The electric field will definitely have both x and y components, but this particular problem is asking us only for the y. Okay, coming back to our picture, let's see. R, this straight line distance, has a vertical portion, a horizontal portion. So I know I can use Pythagorean theorem. But I want to think through first, well, what about a different piece of charge? It's R. Its vertical portion is different than the previous one, but its horizontal portion is the same. If I think about any of these pieces of charge, it's these vertical distances, which we're going to go ahead and call y, because whenever we measure from the origin vertically, or up or down, that is a y position. But this x-coordinate, this horizontal distance, is not any different. 
all of them have that same horizontal distance. So when we set up Pythagorean theorem, we're going to be taking the square root of y squared plus, I'm going to just go ahead and say 2 squared, because 2, this horizontal distance, is the same regardless of which point charge I'm talking about. Y is our variable. That means we want to write dq in terms of dy. That's going to be lambda, dy. And that's because we can always say lambda is dq, the charge on any one little piece divided by the length of that little piece. If our charge distribution is on the y-axis, we just call the length of that little piece dy. All right. So dy is what is going to tell our integration that y is our variable. R is in terms of y. R hat. So R hat has to do with the direction down here. Let me draw it separately. So if this is my DE, my vector, we have an X component and a Y component. We're only going to talk about the Y component because that is what this question is specifically asking us about. So DE again, is represented by this kdq over r squared. That is the magnitude. What would we need to multiply this magnitude by to get this vertical side? Well, y component would be the magnitude times the sine of this angle specifically. It is a negative direction. It's in the negative y direction, which we will account for. But first, what this is telling us at the moment, for just the y component, we need this negative sine theta j hat. So the theta in here is the same as the theta up here in the triangle that we were talking about with r. So the sine of theta up here, the opposite side is y, that vertical distance from the origin to the piece of charge we're talking about. So opposite over hypotenuse, which is r. And plugging in r, we find to account for the direction, we have minus y over the square root of y squared plus 2 squared, j hat. So pulling all of this together, the y component of the electric field will be the integral of k is our constant dq is lambda dy, r is the square root of y squared plus 2 squared, but r is squared, times this sine of theta term, which we found to be negative y over the square root of y squared plus 2 squared. That gives us the y component. Okay, limits of integration. And then I'll pull everything together and make it look so we can see which integral we're working with. The limits of integration, because y is our variable, the lower limit of integration is the lower y value. So the bottom end of this charge distribution, the negative 1.1 meters. The upper limit is the top of that charge distribution, so the 4 meters. 
So these limits are telling us that the charge exists everywhere between these two points. Okay, let's pull out constants. K is a constant. Y is not. Lambda is a constant because it said the charge was uniformly distributed. I'm going to go ahead and bring out the negative j hat as well. I still have y and dy and this quantity of y squared plus 2 squared to the 3 halves. I have my limits. All right. So we want to look at those common integrals on the back page of the test notes. I think I actually have them. Okay, just kidding. I don't. So look those up again. Actually, let me go find them again. I apologize for all that copying and pasting and moving stuff around. I got these three important integrals in here again. Now the difference, our important integrals are in terms of x being the variable. That's what we mean by dx in here. In our particular problem we're solving, y is our variable. And so we have our variable y times dy. That one is equivalent to this one. Just this table is in terms of x instead of y. What that means for us is the result of the integral is minus 1 over the square root of y squared plus 2 squared. The stuff that's in the variable squared plus the constant squared. And our limits will be negative 1.1 to 4. Okay, let's start plugging some numbers in. K, 8.99 times 10 to the 9. And I apologize, my computer's having some lagging issues. The negative sign is part of the j hat. So that's k. Lambda was the 12 nanocoulombs. So 12 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs over the total length of 5.1 meters that the charge was spread between. Minus 1. Actually, do you mind if I cross out these negative signs? We'll cancel those out, and then I won't have a negative sign in here. So 1 over the square root of the upper limit squared minus 1 over the square root of the lower limit squared. And this is all j hat. Logging in. This one takes a minute to get plugged in. K 
Okay, I'm getting negative 4.5. This is J hat. The negative J hat means it points down, which we already mentioned, right? If we scroll back over to this picture, there's more charge above the x-axis, so the overall y component totally should point down. The magnitude is the 4.5, and then our units would end up coming out as newtons per coulomb. And we could follow that through if we wanted to. There's a meter. These guys end up being in meters. And then this meter cancels out with the meter squared in the numerator. This one coulomb cancels with one of those. And that's what leaves us with just the newtons per coulomb. Now, this is only the y component of the electric field. We didn't take the time to do the x component. You might want to consider trying to set that up and solving it.